We're coming to you from the floor of the 2016 New York Auto Show, next on Talking Cars. Hi everybody, welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Gabe Shenhor. We're here on the floor of the New York Auto Show. Gotta say, this year's show, a little light on stuff. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> That's it, we're That's done. It. That's it. We'll, we'll save your time. Uh, no. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I, I hate to be a killjoy, but this show is... I specialize in it, so go. <laughs> <laughs> it's much ado about nothing. I mean, a pile of AMGs and a Jaguar SVR and the, the Summit Jeep and Overland Jeep. I mean, seriously, you, you're getting journalists to go downstairs to look at two additional versions of the Grand, Grand Cherokee. Okay, let's, let's, let's be fair. There are a few important cars here. One of them that's really key for our readers, our viewers, is the Subaru Impreza. Yes, indeed, the Subaru Impreza is a, a full redesign, although uh, it's not very obvious just looking at the right. styling. It's a little bit sharper, a little bit sleeker. It's, it's still, it's very recognizable it's, as an Impreza. But it's brand, a brand new chassis, and, uh, and that, uh, that's pretty significant because all future Subarus are going to be based on that. That's the first, uh, first one out of the gate. Right, it was interesting hearing their claims for this new platform because they said they made it a lot stiffer in order to improve crash test results. Subarus already do great in crash test results. They made it stiffer so that it rides better. Subarus already generally ride pretty well. It'll be interesting to see what improvements actually come out of this. Yeah, probably uh, NVH to uh, you know, noise, vibration, harshness, improvements and such. Well, I've already given advice to some people I know that, you know, wait till the fall. Um, there's probably some good deals on 2016 Impressos mm -hmm. because they're really, really good cars. Yeah. So. Um, you know, we'll see, but like, like you said, a lot of these things that they've improved upon, there was already a pretty good platform for them. Right, right one now. thing that is obviously improved upon is the interior is nicer. That's something that Subaru's been doing as they've been redesigning their models. You know, when they redid the 15 Outback, it didn't change the car a lot, but they added more feature content. They made the interiors nicer. Yeah, even though, you know, but somehow interiors are usually a Subaru Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're a little chintzy. I think they're coming up to par though with, yeah. with these newer redesigns. Uh, there's a new, well, a heavily updated two liter four, boxer four cylinder here with direct injection, a little bit more power. They're gonna try to up fuel economy a bit. Um, it'll be interesting. I mean, the Impreza's our top pick for compact or small car and we'll see if they carry that over. We'll see, indeed. Indeed. Um, another new car that's very interesting is the Hyundai Ioniq. Yes, very much so. I mean, that's uh, it's like a three-pronged attack on uh, the iconic Prius, uh, which is, you know, when you say hybrid, it's pretty much equals Prius. And so Hyundai's going to bring out uh, that car in the uh, form of a hybrid, uh, pure EV, and a plug-in hybrid. Now, what's amazing is we've been saying for years, why does no one take the Prius on head-on? Right. And finally, someone did. Well, it looks. I mean, it, it's really. It's the same shape of the Prius. It's got the same split rear window as mm -hmm. the Prius. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, the Prius. What was it 2004 when they came out with that second generation Prius? Yeah, the one where it really took off. Where it really took off, and it's kind of like, you know, 2017. It took a long time for someone actually to do that. I mean, the closest thing was probably the Honda Insight, but that was a terrible execution. That was a half-hearted effort. It was tried to be a cheaper Prius, right. so which this one no looks one really like wanted. Not. Not just that we'll do that. I mean, they're promising better fuel efficiency than the Prius. They're, mm -hmm. they're promising a longer range with the plug-in version right. than the new Prius Prime, which also will be plug-in. So it'll be interesting. I mean, one of the disappointments, I think, though, is the way it looks. I mean, oh, it's Are very, you disappointed by that? It's very stodgy. It's very conservatively styled. It really doesn't stand out. You know, I mean, I, I think they kind of missed an opportunity to do something that really, look, uh, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip, skip skip to the chase here. You know, I mean, okay, yes, there's a lot of uninteresting things going on here. I thought there was one really interesting thing, mm -hmm. and it was it has to do with Genesis, mm. right? So I mean, Hyundai has introduced this new Highline luxury brand Genesis. Mm -hmm. What if that Ionic had a luxury component to it? Mm. You know, and that was what the Ionic was—a luxury vehicle that really stood out. And they know how. This looks like they know how to do styling from Genesis. Well, I mean, the Ionic's already a bit more luxurious than the Prius. It does offer real leather. It does offer memories, you know, for the, I mean, it does have more feature content than the Prius. Well, you could get leather Even with, the Prius, well, no, but- it's fake stuff. Yeah, fake stuff. <laughs> it's still well, soft. What I mean, <laughs> but, but the, well, look, I mean, Mercedes-Benz are putting in, you know, fake leather, but sure. it looks nice. The difference is, though, it's the, what it looks like on the outside. 
It's a very conservatively it's styled, I mean, normal vehicle. I mean, to me, look, my wife's got a 2006 Prius. To me, that looks a little bit more out there, you know, the way the car is styled. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I think it looks, I think it's normalcy is an attribute. I mean, especially you get in it, it has a normal dashboard. It doesn't have a kooky shifter. It doesn't have the Stormtrooper white plastic of the new it, Prius. It, it is normal. It does, the new Prius <laughs> is gonna alienate some people with all the angles and cuts in the Oregon. Well, some, isn't there somewhere in the middle though? You know? Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, Chevy Volt's actually pretty much in the middle. They've it's more normal in the transmission, too, we might add, mm -hmm. that uh, most hybrids use CVT or EVT, and the Ionic uses a, a dual-clutch six-speed auto. Mm -hmm. Right, Hyundai has like a vendetta against CVTs. They seem to want to avoid them at all costs. Well, they listen to customers because a lot of people don't enjoy driving CVTs. Mm -hmm. And if they could do the same thing with a conventional transmission and get the same fuel efficiency, more power to them. Right. Um, another new car here is um, also from, um, from and, the same And in addition, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of gets uh, the electric, the initial electric torque kind of gets you, get away, gets away from the, uh, the problems of uh, dual clutch transmissions, all that initial vibration at low speed. Smooths everything out. Yeah. It does. I mean, you can also argue, though, that hybrids kind of mask CVTs because they, they can do the same thing. You yeah, can, but still, you when you're in a hurry, it's, it gets a little unpleasant. They, they're, they're all rubber bandy. Yeah. Nah, you know, it's like, yeah, here's a fair. power plant here, and mm -hmm. then the wheels do something else, and they're not connected. Right. Okay, um, next car, same company, uh, Kia Cadenza. Yeah, so uh, interestingly, uh, the, the, let's say uh, the Hyundai Azera is going away, uh, which is the no. sister vehicle no, of, don't say the, it. Uh, don't. of the Kia Cadenza. And uh, does, does anyone know that the Zara exists, or the uh, Condenza, well, for that matter? Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. This, I mean, this both is of them compete in kind of like a, a very n niche of a large front-wheel drive sedan. But but they're vehicles that are really good. I mean, people know what right. the they've heard of Avalons, right? right? I mean, that's that's a household term, right? Um, they've heard of Impalas and Chrysler 300 and Chrysler 300. This is a great. I mean, we say it all the time. I mean, we look at the Cadenza, it's like this is a really good choice, but you've never heard of it, and maybe you don't care. Right. You know, so it's kind of one of these cars that nobody knows about, but it actually is really good, and they updated it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, improved styling. Will anyone care? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, but it's I tough. mean, it, it looks pretty promising, roomy, normal. You know, easy controls. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. that Kia has stood for right. for the last couple sure. of years. I've got another car that I'm not sure if people will care about, and maybe this will be controversial. <laughs> uh, Alfa Romeo showed more versions of the Giulia. Yeah, uh, I mean, they started with the, uh, the top end, uh, Quadrofoglio, whatever it's called, which is like a competitor of the uh, M3, M4. Mm -hmm. And now they're trickling down to the more normal versions of, uh, you know, two liter and all wheel drive, and uh, which are gonna, you know, it's going to be another choice for the uh, the un BMW. But, but here's the problem. I mean, are it's people looking for another choice. Well, okay. I will say yes. People are looking for another choice, and we mm. said it before because right. in the compact okay. luxury market, I set you up. You set me up. Nice, <laughs> nicely done. <laughs> like, say something smart, Jake. No. <laughs> but um, look, I mean, uh, in that market, right? We we know it. There's openings, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have the C-Class Mercedes, which is a great car to drive. Unreliable. Unreliable. Same. You got the BMW, which is pretty good, and the reliability's been kind of off and on. Then you got Lexus with the IS, which is reliable, but uh, it's not a great driving car. Yeah. Not a there sports is, sedan. So there is no, room the, for a vehicle here, but it's not this vehicle. So this is a vehicle that, let's say it drives great. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's really going to, because if it has anything, you know, if it drives anything even like a Ghibli, which is not no. that impressive. No, it's not. You know, you know, who knows? I mean, obviously, we haven't driven it yet. But, but the reliability from this automaker has not been good. No. And a new entry, you know, again, if you want to, if you want to drive something that's really nice, get yourself a C Class, and you don't care about reliability. Well, it's also you've got the Jaguar XE, which right. is the There's same. More. It's the same exact thing. It's right. like, uh, okay, I mean, here's I a mean, new what, what, What's happening in this in this right. class is you have this holy trinity of BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes C Class, and the Audi A4. Mm -hmm. All the rest are like uh, kind of like it's very religious know, experience, very <laughs> scattered about. So everybody a, wants a piece of that pie. A, a, well, sure, a, no, a, it, it's, a it's a sweet, where it's, at it's right a now, sweet, sweet, delicious pie. I mean, there's <laughs> there's lots of money to be made in the luxury market. Just Alpha has been one of these. Yeah, it's coming next year. Yeah, it's coming next year. Oh, maybe next year. 
I mean, a couple of years ago at Detroit, they said something like eight new models by 2018, and they've chopped that that that, um, that forecast down considerably because Fiat's kind of they are kind of in a mess right now you know, with getting rid of the Dart and the 200, and so I just don't know. I mean, well, it's nice to have choices. You know, if you don't want a German car, you can go Italian or British. They'll sell 30,000 in the first year, and then it will trickle off quickly. They need something that's going to be reliable. They need to prove the record that they can make reliable cars, and they're not, they're not establishing a good record. Okay, talking about this market segment. Yay. If someone actually did bring out a reliable car, and Hyundai showed a concept, and you had mentioned it earlier. Yes. That would be the concept. This is it. This in, is... Innovatively named the New York concept. Uh, they're, that's pandering, isn't it? Yes. Like, hello, New York, come on. Uh, but I thought that was a new Chrysler New Yorker. <laughs> oh. This, I'll just let that go. But look, this was the car of this show. You so, think so? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. No, it was uh, definitely the star of the this show. This was the star of the show. It, and look, I mean, I'm not a big one for concepts because they can show whatever they want and then, you know, nothing comes out of it. I'm more interested in the real cars. But that was the star of this show because, look, Hyundai is coming out. We, we have a new brand, right, mm -hmm. named Genesis. We yes. don't, this doesn't happen very much, a no. new brand. I mean, you got to It's a big investment. It's a big investment. And you know what? Hyundai has got not just the money behind it, but the expertise behind it, the parts behind it, to actually take this thing seriously. Mm -hmm. And they recognize that there is a hole in this market, right? right? Something that's reliable, that's easy to use, that, that's fun to drive, and I think they can do it. And when they showed this, you know, this, this concept, this New York concept, I know, pandering, but I mean, it looks like something different. It does. You know, it's not it like, does. oh, here's a, another smaller size Genesis or whatever it yeah, is. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if, if it's a beautiful design, but it's they're certainly striking. Well, right. And, and who knows if the mm, real car is going to look anything yeah. like it, but it just shows that, like, we're going to take this seriously. They, I mean, you know what the show, I mean, look, the press conference wasn't even about the car. It was like, look at all these exactly. designers we hired. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. and, and you know what, it's, you're absolutely right, because it's much less about the car. It's more about a declaration of intent. Yes. That we're serious. We're going to uh, establish this brand, and there are going to be models. I mean, they already uh, are talking about the luxury SUV, mm -hmm. uh, sports sedan. Uh, right, right, so. SUVs and sedans. But again, and, hiring a designer, hiring designers is fine because in the recent years, they've worked out ride and handling. They've worked right. out reliability. Fuel They're efficiency. working out fuel efficiency. All, right. could, but something was always missing until they hired Peter Schreier from Audi, mm. which Audi regrets. He's done miracles with Kia. Right. Absolutely. Well, so look, I mean, there's an opening, right? If you're looking for an entry level luxury and you, you care about reliability, but you want something that's interesting to drive, maybe Genesis is going to be able to figure out how to do that. Right. Really looking forward to seeing how much of that comes to market and what that car drives like. Uh, the other interesting concept here, which I'm surprised you didn't say this stole the show, is what? If you want a Range Rover with gall wing doors, Lincoln's got your number. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that did not steal the show. <laughs> oh, come on. The Navigator concept wasn't. Okay, so, so the Navigator concept, right? The whole half of this giant vehicle opens up like a clamshell. I've never seen really? the pass. I don't think I don't think we've ever seen the passenger side open. I think it would just fold in half if you had both I just, doors. I just open. imagine like both smoke coming out and like somebody walking down is like all the all the, leader, all you know? the steps. Like, there's like a lot of steps. <sighs> was, Look, that, was that the Lincoln Model X actually? Well, so that, so that brings these things like oh oh Tesla is coming out with clamshell doors and SUV, so we're gonna make a big one. You know, it just it just seemed. Yes. That won't be production. Well, I think. I mean, uh, I mean the, the, actually, what this means is that yeah, it's it's a precursor for the re for the redesign of the of the Navigator, which is going to be based on the aluminum F one fifty. And and it's for realized. I mean, there are competitors selling these ridiculous vehicles for ninety thousand, a hundred thousand yeah. Escalade, and they are kind of stuck with their truck routes there. And and we said that when we tested the Navigator, it's yeah, noisy. The, updated last the, year. the interior is is chintzy, cheap. And they realize that, and, and I think that's well. They're going to do. About. They're doing what they did with the Continental. You know, although the Continental's clean sheet. I mean, you've what is there and isn't insane looks pretty good. I mean, it looks like it looks a lot like a Range Rover. They have shown that they can do nice interiors recently. Yeah, they can do nice interior, nice interiors. The grill will probably stay. We'll see that on whatever we'll it is. You know, it's always about the grill with, with, with Lincoln. <laughs> um, you know, Matthew McConaughey, who was here, you oh, know, talked grief. about Lincoln. He cashed his check. <laughs> speaking of the grill, speaking yes. of the grill, uh, two important updates. One of them is the Acura MDX. Now, Acura, 
their press conferences typically have two very important things. One is we are introducing a new corporate grill. Yes. That uh, <laughs> no one will oh, invariably. There's, there, there's no more red carpet athlete or whatever. Uh, uh, no, there? it's precision crafted oh, precision, performance. Yeah. There's some precision there. Yeah. Uh, they, they will have some grill that no one likes and they will have lots of acronyms because one of the things they did with the MDX is they introduced the super hybrid, super handling all wheel oh, drive. Oh, so what's the SH now? Uh, super handling or super hybrid? Uh, just square it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that was very important that they did with the MDX is they've, and this is near and dear to us at Consumer Reports, is that they have made advanced safety equipment standard. Forward collision warning is standard. Right. Uh, automatic emergency braking is standard across all of them. And we really want more companies to do this. Yep. Yeah. That's significant. As for the grill change, it looks... Is not significant. It's not significant. It looks actually kind of like a Kia now. I mean, it's kind of like... Or a Mazda upside looks down, like, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Um, another update. It's that better than that uh, razor blade thing that. Yeah. Some people call it the beak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the beak is gone. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another update was a Toyota Highlander. Mm -hmm. um, got the 3.5 liter and the eight-speed automatic from the Lexus RX. Right. So uh, yeah, I mean that was uh, kind of expected, and uh, you know that'll, that'll help uh, with fuel economy mm -hmm. and. Um, Look, we did we did top picks just recently, and right. it was yeah. edged out by not a whole lot, and now they made some improvements to it, and you can put it right back on the map. The other thing that may help with in the top pick battle is that eventually it will also get standard uh, forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking. There's been a bit of confusion between the press releases and availability. Well, what's clear is eventually I mean, it will come out. I think it'll happen really soon. I mean, it, it, it basically comes down to this for this automaker and some other automakers. They're committed to making this stuff standard. Mm -hmm. we're really, what, what I've been hearing by talking to a lot of people is that it's more about actually getting production up from the right. suppliers. So it's not even the automaker. I mean, the automakers want to make this stuff standard equipment. Mm -hmm. They realize that it's what's right in the market if they want to be competitive. But suddenly, you've got to build a whole lot of this equipment, these cameras and all that. Yeah. And so as soon as they can, they, this is, I think it's going to be standard. Which is terrific for consumers. Because Absolutely. right now, the only way it's standard is in expensive Volvos and Mercedes. So right. this is great. Uh, some variations on cars we've already seen before. The Prius Prime. It's finally a plug-in that might actually be worth plugging in from Toyota. Yeah, so yeah, exactly right. I mean, the previous uh, Prius plug-in was, uh, was kind of a, a very um, half-hearted plug in every time it smelled a little mild incline or you were a little bit in a hurry it turned on the uh, the engine the gas engine immediately and that was uh, really uh, undermined the whole uh, EV experience of the car it and also had they, like 12 claiming, miles of range and now uh, if to, that on a good day and now and they're and, claiming uh, 22 now they're claiming 22 and they're even saying that you know what even when you floor it it's gonna stay in EV mode which customers Wanted. Well, look, I mean, when it comes to plug-in hybrids, not, I mean, a lot of people buy, when there's a hybrid and there's a plug-in hybrid, let's face it, not a lot of people are buying the plug-in version, and some of the people are especially doing it. Especially with Prius. Especially yeah. with the Prius, and some of the people are doing it, they're trying to get in the high, you know, the yeah, HOV yeah. lanes or whatnot. Yeah. Or let you get a good parking space at work where the chargers are. Right, but there's a more to this car than just being plug-in. I mean, there's actually new sheet metal in this car. Mm -hmm. So it's got a whole new fascia, which is interesting, it looks much more conservative than the normal Prius. That's true. Um, the giant rear end, screen inside, too. Giant screen, very reminiscent of a Tesla. Tesla. I mean, mm -hmm. it's this big, giant screen, it, it looks like it's very uh, ipad -y. And then in the back, there's like this carbon fiber hatch and this, this glass that's like, I can't imagine how that's going to work. There's like bent glass going on. So they're trying to differentiate it. But I think, you know, what I think what's really important actually about the Prius, it's not what this car is. I think it's what's next. And look, CT200H, mm. right? I mean, Lexus has been sold around with this really not competitive vehicle, right. which is kind of Prius based. Yeah. Well, now we got a new Prius platform that which drives, drives a lot better, better quite a bit quieter, right. has a lot more tricks up its sleeve. I mean, they sell an all-wheel drive model of this thing in Japan. They've got you know lithium-ion batteries. They've got this plug-in version. What's going to happen when they actually do a real small Lexus hybrid? and get the interior right and all that. I think that's gonna be a really interesting car. Yeah, so this car is basically a precursor of more things. I think, I personally think it is. They haven't announced that, but I mean, it's just inevitable. Okay. Yeah, and if it comes with all-wheel drive, it's gonna be brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, My favorite car of the show, no surprise, the Mazda Miata RF. Oh, yeah, that's pretty slick. That, that's uh, a kind of a neat <laughs> way of doing a retractable hardtop. It is, yeah, and uh, and I talked to them, and they they claim that it adds less than 100 pounds of weight, 
and it folds in 12 That's seconds. That's a lot for a car that only weighs like 2,300 pounds or something like that. There hasn't been enough yeah. fighting here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite on this one. <laughs> Isn't it kind of like a Miata del Sol? You know, it's got that upright window and these buttresses that don't really do anything. Sexy. And I'll, okay, fine, I'll give you that, that. If you look at the profile of it, I looked at that and I'm like, that looks great. Mm -hmm. You know why I think it looks great? Because I wish the thing was a lift back. To me, if you want to do another body style in the Miata, give me a hard top with a lift back, a little room there. Because nothing's like as sexy as practicality. Look, I mean, the was, most expensive cars. Wasn't there a BMW cars, Z4 like that? Yes, there yeah. was. Four, no, not four like people that. bought not, it. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. Like, like an F-Type. Like an F-Type coupe is not uh, a, look, a good looking car. It's no. got a glass down there and you yes, open it up. Come yes. on. No, you're right. You're right. I loved it. The Jaguar XK. That there had you that. go. Oh, exactly. Right. No, I'm not talking about the, the Z4. <laughs> The Z4. Oh, that was a good dig, though. I, yeah, I that, appreciate that. That, that was well done. <laughs> no, I, I would take that car in that gunmetal gray and that brown leather on brown the floor. Leather. That's it's always about uh, the brown leather. That was That's what it's all, all nice. about. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, Honda showed us a Civic hatchback that had some neon green bits on it, and that's... It was green. Yeah. Well, there's a four-door hatchback and a two-door hatchback and there's and more the body styles. Coupe and and yeah, door. every body style known to mankind well, is coming. Well, a wagon street. would be cool, but yeah. we're not going to get that. But. Or maybe a two-door uh, fastback coupe. I think maybe. that's called an Integra. I think that would be called. <laughs> God, the Integra's not coming I can, back. I can only dream. They can't, they can't fit that <laughs> new grill on an Integra. <laughs> No. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.